We've got this super hot. Ooh, that's hot. I told you. You want to try something totally unique? Treat yourself. Explore the foodie in you. Don't be shy with it. Give it those aromatics. See how pretty that looks? They're gonna make you cry. <laughs> good food equals good mood. Dazzle up your dinners with my red hot recipe. Snap, crackle, pop. These tacos would pass the Jenny Milkowski test. Let's plate this bad boy up. What a great dinner party this is gonna be. And let's get cooking with styles. Wow, this is so cool. Thanks for joining me on this special edition of Cooking with Styles. This has been a killer journey for me. I've been able to take you on some of my trips, the food I picked up in Baja, California, to things that I learned cooking in the restaurants for over 18 years. The holidays are just around the corner, and I love the holidays and all the food that it brings. But, uh, you know, how about we do something different as far as using that leftover turkey? Let's do tacos. How about some carnitas style thigh meat and an Asian style breast meat poached in miso? And that will be our two different tacos that we're gonna do. So I've got some breast meat right here and then I've got the thigh meat right here. A little bit of leftover, there's not nearly as much of the white meat left as there is the turkey thigh meat. It seems like people prefer the, the white meat over the uh, dark meat. But anyway, I've got my turkey breast here and I'm gonna start to break this down just a little bit. And just like you do when you're getting it ready to serve for Thanksgiving, you kind of break it down. We'll get rid of that skin because we're not gonna use it. And we're gonna take the different pieces of the thigh right here and just break it off the bone. And this is gonna be just kind of like carnitas. It looks like pork. That's the good thing about turkey and or chicken is it kind of takes the flavor of what it is you're cooking with the seasoning. So we'll take that and we'll take a little bit of this leg meat because uh, this has got a lot more gristle and, and sinew in it. And we're gonna season this with a little bit of cumin, salt and pepper. So there's our turkey meat, that's broken down there. And then we're gonna take our breast meat. And so I've got some slice, but what I want you to do is kind of cut it across the grain like that. So this will be nice and tender. And then these little fillets will go on my griddle on the uh, stove after we soak this in a little bit of miso. So let me grab the turkey meat here and we'll throw it in our bowl. I've already got some broken up there. We're gonna take a teaspoon of cumin, sprinkle that over the top. We'll take a heavy pinch of salt and a heavy pinch of oregano. We're gonna to toss that and that is gonna go on the frying pan with a little bit of olive oil and we'll cook that up so it's nice and crispy. So while I get this going and we'll have some delicious tacos, let's look at one of the first ones we did a Baja ceviche with a little bit of mango. It is sweet and it is good. You can use any type of white firm fish, but I'm gonna show you three that I like to use. Halibut, yellowtail, and white sea bass. We're gonna go with halibut and I'm gonna use about a half a pound. We'll dice that up. It's gotta be bite size. So now we gotta put in the citrus. We're gonna use about a half a cup of limes and about a quarter cup of lemons. Good healthy pinch of kosher salt. Toss that fish so it's soaking in the lemon-lime mixture. I'm gonna put this on ice. A little bit of onions here, dice these up. A pretty tight dice on this. I'm gonna use a Persian cucumber. They are less watery and have less seeds and you can eat the skin. Roma tomatoes. The seeds have bitterness and add a lot of liquid. So we're gonna take those away. So you see how I do this? I take it and run it down the outside. So I'm just getting the flesh of the tomato. So next, the uh, mangoes. These are a little bit tricky because peeling them is not easy. But if you just slide that blade underneath like so, you'll get a nice open piece of flesh there. I mean, how beautiful is that? Now some garlic. Now it's time to bring some heat with the little serrano chilies. I take the seeds out and be careful when you do this that you do not touch your eyes after you've handled this because it will burn like you can't believe. And last but not least, a little cilantro. Keep that chilled and you can use the stems. They're nice and tender. All right, so let's put it all together. Our fish is marinated for at least a half an hour, if not an hour. We're gonna take about a half a cup 
of our tomatoes, about a half a cup of our onions, half a cup of the cucumbers, and most of those mangoes, which is about a half a cup. We're gonna do a tablespoon of serrano and then all of our cilantro. A tablespoon of olive oil and a large pinch of salt. See, look at those colors just coming together. Those are just fabulous. And we're gonna let this marinate for about another half hour. So let's put this together. A little avocado. We'll pull most of the moisture off of our ceviche. Now we've got the beautiful fruit of the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the mangoes. And we'll serve this up with a nice little side of chips. Now that's my version of Baja ceviche. Dig in. All right, I hope you like that uh, ceviche dish. Definitely one of my favorites. You can also use yellowtail and or white sea bass. Those are other fishes that are firm and white. Time to uh, finish up this carnita style turkey. We've got our oil nice and hot. We're gonna put it in here to let it get crispy. That's what you wanna hear. You wanna hear that snap, crackle, pop. I'm gonna put that in there. Now I've already got my uh, turkey over here poaching in the miso and we're going to take this turn it once so it gets nice and coated it's going to go right on top there like so now if you don't have a cast iron griddle grill like this you can use a griddle Whew, that's hot all right and so let that cook up just a little bit let's give this a nice little turn What we're trying to do here is get this crispy, so don't turn it too much. If you turn it too much, you're gonna end up with turkey that's mushy and greasy. We want that crispiness on the outside. And so you can see we've got our turkey here that has been already grilled. I'm gonna throw some tortillas on the grill to get those soft, because we're gonna go put this all together here. And while these get hot, I'm gonna pull my turkey that's already grilled up here off the grill. And get that ready. Don't want to overcook it, it's already dry enough. That's going to go right there. Give this one more turn. So while we get this nice and golden brown, we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to make the salsa and guacamole that's going to make this taco dish come together. Thank you so much for joining us back here for this special edition of Cooking with Styles. Now, what would tacos be without a little bit of salsa or pico de gallo and some guacamole? Well, I'm gonna give you a basic salsa mix, but you're gonna have to kind of make it the way you like it. So these are the uh, ground rules. We're gonna start with some tomatoes. These are diced. Let me just give you an idea of what we're talking about when I say diced. We're gonna slice the tomato. Now I'm just gonna do a little demonstration here for you. And notice there's a lot of liquid in this. So with this, you really wanna, if you can, drain that. So see how I cut it and then turn it? So there is my dice. Now you can make this as fine or as coarse as you like. Some people like their pico de gallo really coarse. All right, so there's our tomatoes. And then so from that, we're gonna take a little bit of cilantro, a good, say about a third to a half cup in there. We're gonna take jalapenos. <laughs> Photographer John Steinbaugh likes it hot, so. And then we're gonna take coarse ground kosher salt, and then a little bit of oregano, sprinkle that over the top, and then the lime. This actually acts as like a preservative, so it doesn't start to uh, oxidize and become a little bit, you know, funky. So. Sprinkle that over the top. We're gonna to do a whole lime in here. Some people put lemon in. I just prefer the lime because it's a little bit sweeter. You get this effect of the citrus, but you don't have to get the sour. And I forgot my spoon, I'll be right back. Stay right there, stay with me. And so we take our spoon and we give this a little toss. And I wanna make this in advance because I want the hot or the heat from the jalapenos to get in there. And I don't put the seeds in because there's where a lot of the capsaicin is. But it blends all together. So there's your 
pico de gallo. That's gonna be one of the ingredients. We'll make the guacamole on the back side of this dish that's coming up. It's a really easy pasta arugula tomato dish. All right, so I'm just gonna start with the tomatoes and it's really straightforward. All we're doing is cutting these guys in half like that. These heirloom tomatoes are full of flavor and lots of color. Now it's time for a little bit of garlic. The recipe calls for a tablespoon. And I like to go with a little coarser chop so then when you bite into a piece of garlic, you know you've bitten into it. It's really flavorful. Now this is baby arugula, so you don't have to chop it up. I just like a coarse chop on it though, because I think it fits better with the pasta. So about one inch cuts, we're ready to go to the stove. Since I'm gonna be using angel hair pasta, this stuff cooks really quick, so I'm gonna get the oil started first. We're gonna put about a half a cup of oil in our pan here, and then we're gonna take our garlic. Do not overcook the garlic. You just want to sweat it. Give that a nice swirl like that. And all we're trying to do here is get that garlic to release its flavor into the oil. And I'm gonna take a nice healthy pinch of crushed red pepper. All right, now for the pasta. When you put the pasta in, swirl it around like that. This is gonna to come together real quick, so pay attention. All right, that pasta is done. Let's throw it in the colander, back into the pot, take our olive oil with all those beautiful bits of garlic and crushed red peppers, two tablespoons of butter, our arugula, tomatoes, a good pinch of salt, and you see that arugula is already wilting. The butter adds a little creaminess to it, and the garlic and crushed red peppers Add that beautiful zest. All right, so now we're ready to put it in the bowl and now we'll finish it off with a little freshly grated cheese. And there is your beautiful pasta with the arugula and tomatoes and freshly grated Parmesan cheese on top. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed that pasta dish. What's great about that is it's a standalone, or you can make it with some other type of protein, maybe some fish or uh, a grilled pork tenderloin, which is coming up in just a bit. One thing I forgot to add to our pico de gallo was a little bit of uh, red onion. So we'll put those in and we'll put those back and let them just kind of marinate and turn into a great little pico de gallo. Avocados, guacamole, what does the word guacamole mean? Well, it's guac is the Mexican word for avocado, and mole is the word for sauce. I've got one going there. And so there we go. There's the first one. Now, if you're not used to doing this, hold the avocado in your hand with a towel. But if you've done it before, that's how you do it. Go ahead and scrape that out. And we'll mash this just like mashed potatoes. There we go. Now we're gonna throw in about a quarter cup of red onions. Jalapeno, you decide. I'm gonna give you a half teaspoon and then you can make it hotter or less from there. John, you want a little more? John says, yeah, thumbs up from John. He likes it hot. John's our photographer, John Steinbaum, makes all this happen. A pinch of salt and then a little bit of cilantro. Go ahead and mix that in. And then finally, a squeeze of lime on top. This will act as a preservative to keep it from oxidizing and turning brown on top. At this point, you can make your guacamole creamy or chunky. So while I finish this up, let's take a little break, come back and we'll put this all together on Cooking with Styles. Thanks 
for joining us back here with this special edition of Cooking with Styles. It's time to put everything together. We were going to make a little bit of a tropical salsa here, so we're gonna take some fresh diced mango and put it in one of our pico de gallo. That will go over the uh, miso poached chicken breast, turkey breast, and so now it's time to assemble this. So we're gonna take one of our corn tortillas. We're gonna take some of this beautiful turkey that we've already made. We've got the carnita style thigh meat and we've got the miso style uh, breast meat there. We're gonna take that, take a dollop of the pico de gallo over the top like so. We'll take a, a dollop of our guacamole, a pinch of our shaved cabbage, and there's one of them. Now let's do the carnita style. Again, it's really easy. We've got our chopped up carnita style thigh meat, and instead of using the tropical type, now you could if you wanted, we're gonna go straight pico de gallo here. On top of that, a little bit of that nice guacamole, and then we'll take a little bit of that chopped up Savoy cabbage. So there we go with that. Now we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of sour cream sauce. What I've done is I've taken a little bit of sour cream and added just a little bit of cream to it to thin it down. And then we'll just put that over the top. That probably looks pretty familiar if you've eaten at any of the taco shops. And then to finally finish this off, we'll take some of the dry queso fresco that you get in the uh, little rounds at the store. So there's one of the portions. We're gonna have two people eating here, so we're gonna do one more. While I get that other one assembled, let's get things rolling with a grilled pork tenderloin. And I put this together with a fresh mango chutney sauce. I think you're gonna love it. trick here is the rub. And here are the ingredients of that rub. We've got some brown sugar, cumin, then some paprika, coriander, chili powder, black pepper, granulated garlic. In the center is some espresso, and we'll add some coarse ground salt to that. This is just for one serving, but I like to make extra so I can make this next time and not have to do this every single time. See how simple this is? We're just gonna take our pork tenderloin, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top of it, and then we're gonna take our rub and sprinkle it over that. And we're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes before we throw it on the grill. While we let this rest, let's get the mango sauce going. Peel the outer skin off. We're gonna take this part off, because right there, that's the seed. I'm gonna take my knife, and slide it through gently, careful for your fingers. And along with our sauce, we're gonna have a little cilantro, so we'll go ahead and chop that up right now. And this, you can just make a coarse chop. While we finish this up, let's go ahead and throw our pork tenderloin on the grill. So make sure you oil your grill just a little bit. We don't want this sticking. And we'll go ahead and throw this pork tenderloin on medium-high grill, put the lid down, let it cook for about six, eight minutes per side. All right, it's time for the turn and to get the mango chutney sauce going. About a half cup of orange juice. We've got our chutney that we purchased. I'm not gonna lie to you there. We're gonna throw our fresh mangoes in and we're gonna let this come to a slow simmer and that is gonna go over the top of that pork. All right, time to pull the pork tenderloin and grab the mango chutney sauce. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's looking good. All righty, let's plate this bad boy up. We've got our tenderloin right there. Little cut on the bias. All right, now we're gonna do the mango sauce. The chutney mango right over the top, pull it down in front, and now a little bit of fresh cilantro over the top to give it those aromatics. There's your grilled pork tenderloin with a mango chutney sauce. Enjoy. Well, we've got our tacos assembled, our carnita style thigh meat and the miso poached breast meat. Uh, I think even these tacos would pass the Jenny Milkowski test. Don't forget to serve them with a little bit of lime. But what are you gonna do with all those desserts left over? The apple and pumpkin pie? I have got a great little tip for you and it's super, super easy. We're gonna take a little bit of soft ice cream and we're gonna take the apple pie and the pumpkin pie. This is gonna be kinda of like apple, pumpkin, and cream 
ice cream. We'll put the apple in there, and then we're gonna put the pumpkin in there, and then we're gonna toss this lightly. Don't over toss it because the pumpkin will totally get mushy and it'll turn the ice cream into pumpkin ice cream. And then you're gonna take this ice cream right here and we're gonna put it back inside the container that it came out of. Now I've already gone ahead and done that. So as you can see, the ice cream's nice and soft. We've got just a light little mix here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ice cream mixture that I've already got there you go. And so we put this back in the freezer at least an hour, if not two or three. What I like to do then is kind of make this a little bit, you know, special because, you know, everyone had pie and, and so now they're wondering, well, do I want to eat pie again? Yeah, usually they do, but we're going to mix things up here because we've gone ahead and done something really special with our turkey. And now we're going to take a nice big scoop of this. And this is just like I said, cookies and cream, this is pumpkin pie and cream. Take a look at that down in there. You see how you can see the apple pie and the pumpkin pie and the swirl in there? This is perfect. So, now, what can we, you know, you're just like, okay, this is just ice cream. No, it's not. We're gonna take, you could do this with caramel, you could do it with chocolate. I'm doing it with chocolate because I like the contrast. And we've gone ahead and heated the chocolate up just a little bit, and I'm gonna drizzle that over the top kind of fancy like they do in restaurants. But I gotta tell you, that looks really good. And what a way to set off those tacos with a little bit of ice cream, the apple pie and pumpkin pie from the day before. You know what? It looks so good. I gotta try a little bite of it just to see. Oh yeah. That is so good. So I hope you'd enjoyed this segment that we put together, this half hour of special cooking with styles. We do this every week, Wednesdays on the four. And the folks over at Lexus Escondido have made this all possible. The recipes that we've shown you today, plus a whole lot more, are available on our website. Go to CBS8 slash recipes, and you'll find all the things that we've done on cooking with styles. I want to thank the folks at Lexus Escondido, as well as the photographer, the man behind the scenes, John Steinball, for making this all happen. Just remember, it's what you put into the food, what you get out of it. Happy holidays. Careful if you're not used to doing this. Okay? Any time?